Hello and welcome back to Scholastically Natalie, where we talk about books, writing, reading, D&D, and sometimes other things. Today we're doing last minute D&D prep, hosted by your friendly neighborhood DM, Scholastically Natalie. <laughs> uh, give me a break, we've had like a month off and uh, I'm just a, a whole disaster, really. Do you need any other reasons? Um, but anyways, I figured I'd bring you along for my musings on um, the eldritch horrors of the Feywild, considering I think the last D&D video I did was on the eldritch horrors of the Underdark. Now, these are two very different aesthetics for me, horror-wise. Um, my basic approach with the Underdark horrors is that everything is dark and awful and wet and everything wants to kill you. And it will use anything at its disposal to kill you. Underdark abominations exist to eat things and consume, and they've evolved in the dark, and they're kind of gross. That's pretty much my entire mood for the Underdark. Now, the Feywild is where we get to lean more into Eldritch abominations, um, because you say beings of infinite power and I say why do they look like people unless they want to eat you um or you know enthrall you so in my opinion and I think I had this explained to the players in our last one um if they look like people you probably can't fight them uh <laughs> or if they look like people but are off you definitely can't fight them. Um, what I went into with my players for my basis of the Feywild is that nothing is anchored. The Feywild stretches and changes and moves because it is an incomprehensible plane that I suppose is probably influenced by my reading of the Bartimaeus trilogy, actually, um, because this now is starting to sound more like... Um, the description of the plane that demons live on, although not quite that bad because that was just a whole weird ass experience. Um, but the Fate Wild is a kind of place where distance isn't real and time isn't real in the way that it is in the material plane. I have one character who has come out of the uh, uh, Fate Wild, um, and he's now older and younger than he was. He looks young, but he skipped forward in time. Um, strangers to the Feywild can't navigate it um, because there's fixed spots in it, yes, but there's spots that are held in place because the person living there is beyond powerful and is generally an archfey. And you generally don't want to go onto an archfey's territory unless you know they're nice. Um, and archfey aren't nice ever. Uh, luckily for them, they do know of the mostly neutral and sometimes benevolent Archfey Luru, uh, who I pulled out of the D&D uh, Wikipedia from like 3.5. Um, but yeah, she's like the lord of uh, pretty much all creatures uh, in the Feywild, sentient ones and beyond. Um, and one of their passengers would like to go to visit her to make a deal. They are transporting a giant sphinx, by the way, didn't say that. Uh, and one of the other fixed places is with Nether, right? Yes, that is what I named them. It's with Nether, the lord of the pseudo-dragons who also live in the Feywild, and their place of residence is also pretty fixed. Um, Anywhere else that's fixed is inhabited by archfays that they either don't want to meet and probably don't want to make deals with. But if they stumble upon them, well, that's another thing. Um, and because of this, uh, the landscape is constantly shifting. My players are lucky in that they do have an airship. Because if they weren't in an airship, they'd be on the ground. And when that changes every couple of seconds, things can go bad very fast. Um, I believe when we last were talking about it, I took some inspiration from, uh, I forgot the word, from Silver Diamond. Yes, that's the manga. From Silver Diamond, uh, where they had a giant snake become crystal and become a river. 
um, and they got to witness the river that they were following become clear scales, become a snake, become a river again as it cycles through that, and they got to see the mountains just move and vanish, and in between blinks, the entire atmosphere changes, and the ground changes, um, because the Feywild is not still. Um, honestly, I should start implementing madness rules, shouldn't I? Okay, um, that was a, an excellent thought I had just explaining this. Um, so, because of this, there are an endless amount of creatures they can encounter. Um, and so what I am looking for are just some... Some creatures that they can deal with. Um... Let's see, is this like just inspo for role playing? Yeah, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I am looking for the creatures. There you go, all critters classified as fey. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so we do have the Aladrin, but those are friendly. Um, ooh, we do have Nance and Nerith. So let's look at these babies, cause you are a water spirit, and they are currently traveling over a river. Let's see, CR two. How about you, aquatic fay? Uh, you are related to tritons. Interesting. So let's see. Anaya, D and D, high base stats. Oof, CR one. Okay, Anaya. Um, do 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 do. Oops, well, that wasn't what I meant to do. Take me back. Okay. So we've got a Nyad. Um, Nereid is also Water Fae. Oops. <coughs> Sorry, that was funny. No. Ooh, CR7. Okay, we can live with that. That will certainly be more of a challenge. Because guess what? We are intruding upon their land. Oh no, we need like a master water fay. Arch fay D. D water. There we go, Archfey of the Sea. Dost thou exist? His rippling majesty, Ulorian the River King. Ulorian. Okay. It's rippling majesty, Lorian the River King. Is 
This is perfect. Oh. Dude, this is this is gonna be so good. I can already see this playing out. Oh. Okay, let's see. How big is a giant snake? Let's see, you've got a huge see your two. Hmm. Now what am I looking for? I can't remember. Fuck. D and D homebrew. Creation. There we go. Humbrewery. Oh, hello, friend. Oh, it's built for Chrome. Hold on. Let's go there. So what we need is to come back over here, close out of that. So let's see. So we've got huge. Okay, size class D and D five E. Let's see. I want them to be gargantuan, I think. So yeah, yeah, okay. Um, what I would like, PHB, monster, step block. Okay. Would like... I don't have a cool name for him. Snake River. Do, do, do. Let's go for Google Translate. What? What? I'm sorry, guys. I'm swearing so much. <laughs> no, that's a little too close to Schlong. Punjabi? Mm, not quite. Raul? I like Raul. Is there blue in you? I can't pronounce that. I definitely can't pronounce that. Serpent I can do it. Gantu and Fay. Neutral. So Giant Snake D D Five E set. Okay, so this is gonna be the biggest snake in existence. Okay, so his AC is going to be good because he's a giant snake. Um, I have no mercy for my underlings. And uh, we'll prep him just in case. Okay, 250, speed one foot. Yeah, let's not. How fast are you, buddy? 30 feet and then swim. That. 
right? Fold? Nope, nope. Figuring out stats. Let's see. So if you just got a 19, you're just gonna have 20. Plus five. Dex. Let's do 11 and that's gonna be plus one. Con is not gonna be that. 19 definitely is a giant ass snake. Intelligence. Wisdom. Seventeen is a plus three, isn't it? Yes. Okay, condition immunities. Poisoned death. Oh God, what is the passive perception? I don't think that's the right language, but I'll know what I mean. I don't know how much XP that is, but we're currently doing milestone. So then... Creator of Rivers. Anywhere. Sarpnati moves when he is crystallized. Becomes rough terrain as it turns to mud. And anywhere Sarpnidi moves as a river, remains a river behind him. There are periods there. That should be there. Yeah, cool. So, what am I thinking for this one? See flood. And as an action, Sarp the D can choose to flood the surrounding. Ten foot radius around him, around it. 
Jesus. It is a crystal. It is mud. Mm. I actually have he here. Sarpedi is an it. That turn, enemies within ten feet. <coughs> within a ten foot. Let's go 14 and be nice. Succeed on DC 14. Strength saving throw will be knocked prone by a sudden wave of water. On the subsequent turns, the affected area becomes rough terrain. Okay, I think those are two good be a melee weapon attack, but it is using strength and he is proficient. Uh, proficiencies. Howdy hey. Yeah, I just want that. Okay, thank you. It is a plus six. Okay. Plus eleven to hit. Reach. Let's just make it 15 feet, one target. Upon hit, um, the average of 3d12. Thirty twelve, nineteen point five, so that would be nineteen. Do 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 do. Okay, is it three D twelve plus? Oh, that would be plus five. So nineteen plus five is twenty four. I'm not planning on them fighting this snake. I would just like to stat it. But if they do fight the snake, then if they die, they die. to hit, reach 20 feet, one target, let's see, why don't we do, yeah, let's do 40, 10. So 
that's 22. It's 27. Then, hello, hello to all of you at the end. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. What do you look like on the bottom? Okay. I think this is exactly what I would like. Um, page numbers definitely should be one. Um, and that is how I would like that. Um, then we're gonna download this BB. Looks absolutely stunning. <sighs> Amazing. Oops, does not have a title? How do I, how do I give it a title? Okay, I don't remember. Okay, good job me. We got all of that. So. Sarpanadi. Real question is, what CR did I just give this lovely, lovely, lovely snack? Ah, I gave you an 18. Okay. Eighteen. For snack. Okay, so uh, by spitting and the water fae first five naiads second two naiads three Third, and fourth, Morian, potential, potential pause, four naiads, one, Fifth, Lorian plus Sarp Nadi. See, so show me your stats again, Ruger King. How much HP? One fifty. Oh Jesus, his attacks are rough. Um, well, oh, that's so cool. Sorry, that when a creature within the River King's melee stands up from prone, the River King can make a long sword attack on that creature with an advantage. Oh, that's so neat. Anyways. Um, so then... At 100, he summons snack. Ending 75 to 50. Snack abandons him. Okay, so we have a pretty good theory about how this should go. Um, I don't remember if I had them landing anywhere yet. Uh, 
So depending on how tired they are, this might be deeply unpleasant for them. Hopefully they aren't too bad. But I also hope it will be lots and lots of fun. So, um... I do want to give them a good fight. They've missed out on a couple because they've been mostly role-playing, to be honest, which has been fun. Um, I enjoy my players having a good time doing some self-guided uh, interactions. I mostly have NPCs respond to them, not instigate things. I'll drop some quest hooks here and there, but I do love watching them just d do their own thing, honestly. Um, and I think that has me pretty much set for next time. I am excited to attack them. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to ground their ship somehow, but that can be done with a snake that is tall and made of water. Unsurprisingly, uh, water snakes can do a lot and, and, you know, when they're big, they're big. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this mild to moderately entertaining planning session. Wow, this did take longer than I thought it would. Um, and I am excited to see how my players feel about this. Oh no, I forgot to put the warning at the beginning. Hopefully I remembered to record that. <laughs> um, I hope you all had a good week. I have been pretty productive this week, and that's been crazy. Whack, absolutely insane. I'm used to being productive. Um, a lot of my Amazon stuff has come, and one of them includes a label maker. It's amazing. I love label makers. I didn't realize they were so awesome. Um, this is the best time of my life. <laughs> uh, let me know if anything exciting or unexciting has happened. I also like to know how you guys are just doing in general, if you're enjoying yourselves, if you're enjoying life. Um, I realize that this has been a lengthy and talky video, so hopefully this gave you something while you were listening to it, even if it was just to fall asleep. Um, if you'd like to know how this session goes and if I end up uh, TPKing my party, uh, let me know. I'm probably a bad DM because I never calculate anything, but I have told them this in advance a lot. Um, <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys next time, and Scholastically Natalie is out.